From skyscrapers that rival the sequoias, airplanes that can outfly birds, and computer systems that can calculate way faster than you and I could ever comprehend. Our built reality mimics what we see in the natural world. And this isn't some kind of coincidence either, right? I mean, with 4.5 billion years of innovation, nature has pretty much become the ultimate problem solver. For centuries, we have been co-designing solutions that harmonize human innovation with the world around us. This is the biomimicry blueprint. Nature is actually super functional, who knew? You know how they usually have that saying, the sky's the limit? Well, with biomimicry, it's become the next frontier. So I'm a biotechnologist. Essentially, it's my job to go out there, scouring the earth, trying to find natural phenomena that we can harness to improve our daily lives. But as I look at the world around us and how we live day to day, it's pretty clear that there's a few things around here that aren't all that natural. I mean, as it stands, humans are the only living creatures on Earth, with entire landfills dedicated to everlasting garbage and economies that actually rely on the incineration of waste. But the consequences of not working together with nature, they need no explanation. While biomimetic systems did serve us well for centuries, it kind of seems like as the population grew and demand skyrocketed, humanity went off script and left biology out of the equation entirely. In the age of mass production, the biomimicry blueprint could really only get us so far. While biomimetic systems served us well for centuries, the words natural and consumerism, they don't generally go hand in hand. Humanity has an insatiable hunger. I mean, in the age of mass production, the biomimicry blueprint could really only get us so far. As the population grew and demand skyrocketed, it kind of seems like humanity went off script and left the biomimicry blueprint out of the equation entirely. But the consequences of not working together with nature, they need no explanation. I mean, come on, I only need to say the words plastic straw and stuck up a turtle's nose for every single person here to know, we have done some incredible damage to the Earth. The ironic thing about this is, we are still absolutely obsessed with materials like plastic. Our entire lives are pretty much built upon a plastic platform. It kind of begs the question, right? I mean, how could we have created something that is so good, yet so bad? Well, it's actually pretty clear. While nature produces out of need, humanity produces out of greed. Natural materials are generally circular. They're produced in made-to-order quantities, and then once they're done with, they return back into the earth, ready to be made into something else. On the other hand, human-made materials are linear. They go from the production line to our hands to a landfill for the next eternity but we do not exist in a vacuum. Our trashy actions have even trashier consequences. We have backed nature into a corner, and it has had no choice but to respond. This is something that we have seen and will continue to see as the planet gets warmer and warmer. With increasing urbanization, things like pandemics, natural disasters, they won't just be once-in-a-century occurrences. They're going to become our daily reality. These examples are just nature responding to how we treat it. But there is actually a silver lining to this. Researchers have recently found that there are microbes that have literally evolved to eat plastic. So while we were out here poisoning the earth, poisoning ourselves with microplastics in our diet, nature was finding a way to survive. Currently, we don't really have any ways to actually dispose of plastic. Our methods essentially rely on recycling and recycling again until it eventually turns into itty-bitty microplastic bits. On the other hand, these microbes have the capability of breaking plastics down for good. Using the biomimicry blueprint, scientists are now using these microbes to rethink the way we recycle and to start fixing the planet. We can either work against nature or we can work with it. We are now on a long journey to start undoing some of the damage that we've done to the Earth and to start rebuilding the world with biology. 
But how do we make sure that we don't make the same mistakes as before? Even now, some of our most scalable ways to produce bio-alternatives rely on food crops such as corn or sugarcane. But like I mentioned, these are food crops. Using something that directly competes with our source of food, even though it is scalable, it creates a whole new world of supply chain security issues. There is another way, though. As it turns out, microbes, again, are incredible manufacturing powerhouses. By editing their DNA code, we can get them to produce pretty much any biological material for us on demand. Now, bioengineering, it is not science fiction. We've been applying it to a whole range of different industries for well over 50 years now. Bioengineering has unlocked a whole new world of potential for sustainable production. From spider silk that's spun without the spider, vaccines produced for the masses, and even now, edible meat that's cultivated only from cells. It's pretty interesting, right? I mean, in 100 years, will our standard for beef still be grass-fed? Or will it actually be bioreactor bread? In many cases, technologists have been using the biomimicry blueprint to supercharge systems that have been under our noses this entire time. Take plants. With something that we can literally find for free growing on the side of the road, engineers at companies like JungleFi have created supercharged industrial filters capable of sucking pollutants out of the air on a mass scale. Taking things a step further, companies like Living Carbon are now bioengineering trees that can not only live on decaying land matter, but can also capture a whole lot more carbon out of the environment. Biotechnology is bringing us nature 2.0. The crazy thing about all this is, and what makes me really excited, is we've also only just started to scratch the surface of what nature has to offer us. Take, for example, my favorite animal in the entire world, the naked mole rat. Now, I get it, I know what you're thinking, these things are ugly. But once you get past how the naked mole rat looks, it's actually an incredible feat of just what biology is capable of. By some freak of nature, not only is a naked mole rat immune to acid burns, but it's also resistant to cancer. Scientists are now even turning to the naked mole rat to start understanding how our own human bodies work. Could the naked mole rat actually hold the cure to cancer? Biology is constantly engineering custom-made solutions in response to its environment. We can also see this in the fungal kingdom. In another life, I was actually a researcher working on fungal dark matter. What does this mean? Well, of an estimated 5 million species of fungi, we only know 2% of what actually exists out there. Of this tiny, tiny percentage that we have studied, scientists have already found a whole heap of crazy innovations from fungi that produce their own sunscreen to fungi that can even stop ice from forming in sub-zero temperatures. Using these innovations, scientists are now creating the next generation of commercial products that are way more sophisticated than any of our own inventions. This is the biomimicry blueprint in action. But of all the things that I've spoken about today, you know, I need to be clear. The power to make these changes, it isn't just on us as consumers. It's as humanity as a whole to step up and manufacture these products right in the first place. I mean, I can stand here until the end of days and tell you things like plastics are bad, but if we don't actually have any viable alternatives out there to replace them, what good is that going to be? You know, as a consumer, honestly, I probably would be concerned about the fate of the planet. I think that's totally understandable. But as a biotechnologist, I can tell you this. A change is coming. Around the world, innovators like myself are actively working on the next generation of materials that will build our biofuture and work with nature, not against it. It's time for us to bring back the biomimicry blueprint and rebuild the world with biology. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.